It was part of God's plan. Hi, welcome to Still a Part of Us, a place where we share stories of stillbirth and infant loss. I'm Lee. And I am Winter, and October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month, and we are so excited to be bringing you more birth stories and some interviews, some great interviews. And we also have a wave of light video and some really healing meditations that we're really excited to bring to you this month in honor of our babies. One of the great interviews that I'm excited about was actually done on one of my friend's YouTube channels, Nicole at Mamas and Misses, where I talk about pregnancy after loss and I have thoughts. So if you wanna check it out, you can check it out here and we'll drop a link in the description box so you can look at that. But once again, we're really excited to be here. Three years ago, we lost our own son, Brannon, and because of that, we started it's Still a Part of Us, a podcast and a YouTube channel. During these interviews, we often ask the parents what shouldn't be said to other parents of loss, and these are some of the most cringy. <laughs> worst offenders? Worst offenders. Yeah. I know I have said these in the past. Yeah, this is a complete so. disclaimer that we, before our loss, have probably been guilty of saying these things. So we get it. This is more of an informational video so that yeah. you don't say these things. The more you know. Yes. It was part of God's plan. Uh, you know, I am a religious person, and I do believe that there is a higher being. There is a God who, who does know what's going on. But right during the most vulnerable, hard time of my life, I did have a crisis of faith. I didn't want to hear about <laughs> it was predestined. I just would have liked an arm around my shoulder and saying, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, we're, we're religious. And you know, when it says, when it's, it says, people say that it's God's plan, it kind of sounds like, gosh, I got the short end of the stick. I, I kind of should have stood in line for the, my baby didn't die plan. And I didn't yeah. get that one. And that kind of feels rotten. And I don't think God's a mean God. He loves us actually. It just doesn't feel great. I'm just saying those religious platitudes are not great immediately after you yeah. have a loss. So don't say those. You're young. You can always have another baby. I hate this one, you guys. Okay, so I am not a spring chicken. And thanks for reminding me that I am not, my biological clock is ticking. So that's one issue with this statement. Second issue is that, you know what? This baby cannot be replaced. Brandon cannot be replaced. I was planning on having him and he was not able to come to our home, which is a bummer. Yes, it's super sad, but it's not like a pair of flip-flops that you're going <laughs> to replace at the store. Okay. You, you, he's just not, it's not a replacement baby. I'm not yeah. going to have a replacement baby. I mean, you wouldn't say that if like somebody's spouse died after having been married to them for 25 years, you wouldn't say, Oh, I'm sorry. You know, you can get a new one. You can always get a new one. You can always get a new husband. <laughs> so you don't say that, right? So don't say that. And the last thing is, I just want to point out is that people have fertility issues and that's all getting up into their yeah. business. So don't, just don't. It's not, no, don't do it. Well, at least you still have your daughter. Yes, we still do have our daughter, and we are so very grateful that we do. Yeah. But she is not a consolation prize. Yeah. It's not, well, well, at least you still have the old model. <laughs> no, we love our children independently of each other. Yeah. And we mourn the loss of the child that has passed away. Yeah. And we are so happy that we have our daughter, and that yeah. is wonderful, but they're not... A replace once again, not a replacement. Not a replacement. I know exactly how you feel. I lost my dog last year. My loss for my son is very personal. And I don't know how close you were to your dog. But let's try not to compare grief as being better or worse. Please just say, you know, that sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah. I would just be really super careful about comparing any types of loss. Loss is loss. Like Lee said, it's very personal. This type of grief and loss is very different. And uh, you just be super careful is all I'm saying. Whether you're like, oh, I had a miscarriage. Oh, I had a early term stillbirth or a late term stillbirth. Or it just don't compare the loss. Just once again, just say you're sorry. You know, at least you didn't get to know the baby. 
He was in my womb for nine months and I was getting to know him. He, we called him the jumping bean because he was quite active and I really appreciated that. And you know what? As parents who are pregnant, they are picturing a life with this baby in their yeah. house and they picture a totally different life. And once that baby dies, that life is gone. That picture of the life is gone and you have to mourn. We have to mourn that. And so saying that I wasn't getting to know the baby is really, um, it, it just ignores the fact that you have plans. You want to see your, your life as, as a family of four in that case, in our case. So it's, it really is. We have plans. We have dreams. We have aspirations as a family on how we are going to deal with the addition yeah. with how to not have our older daughter hate the child, <laughs> you know, it, it really is. We have built dreams and it is a, a death of a child and a death of dreams. Before we get into the thing that you should say to a lost mom or a lost dad, if you are enjoying this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, it helps other people find us. And if you want to help us produce more content financially, you can check out in the description box on how to do that. We really appreciate it. We're doing this out of our pocket and we want to make sure that we're still able to bring birth stories to people that need it. So thank you again for supporting us. Yes, thank you. So here's the thing that I think is one great thing to say to a lost mom or a lost dad. I'm sorry, that sucks. And bonus, if you can slip in the baby's name, mm-hmm. that is even better. So how would that go, Winter? I'm sorry about your baby, Brannon. That sucks. Hmm. Wow, that was pretty easy, yep. right? So simple. Okay. And, Here, here's and another level, yeah, right? Here's another level. I'm sorry about your baby, Brannon. That sucks. Can I bring dinner over on Tuesday? Oh, beautiful. That was a beautiful thing to say. I loved it. Okay, so you're trying to offer them something that they that you can help them with. Okay. Here is the best level, I think, in my personal opinion. Let's hear it. I am so sorry about your son, Brannon. And you know what? I'm going to bring dinner over on Tuesday. I'm going to leave it on the porch. I'll text you when it's there. But you know what? If you really want me to, I am happy to sit and chat with you. I would love to sit and chat with you if you will if you want me to be there. And why did you say, I will bring it over on Tuesday and I will just leave it there? You know what? Grief brain is a thing. Your brain does not work after a loss. And you don't know what you need for yourself. Yeah. Like, we... If, if somebody didn't tell us to eat, we, we wouldn't have probably <laughs> wouldn't have eaten uh, yeah, or it, bathed. That sounds terrible, but it's kind of true. You are in such a, a state of disarray that you have no clue what is going on. And if somebody was just to say, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to be doing this for you. It, it really eases the burden. You so. know, we've all been there before, right? Where we say, let me know what I can do for you. Gosh, you know what? When you put the onus on the grieving parent to come up with what they need, it's it's too hard. It's too hard for us. I love what my friend Ashley, and she's a fellow lost mom at Give Presently. She says this, and I love this. She says, lighten their burden. Whatever that is, whatever that looks like for your friend. If you know that they have five other kids and they will need dinner, that do it. Help them. If they need child care so that they can sit and go cry in a closet for hours, they can do that. Go go take care of their other kids for them. If they need dishes or laundry done. Except for with the laundry. Make sure that <laughs> you're sensitive about their delicates. <laughs> Lee. <laughs> anyway, lighten their burden, whatever that happens to be. And thanks for joining us for this. Thank you.